Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This will be the first tip of the week video. I'm gonna start doing those uh, just to give tips to people, free tips, so that they can better themselves in their training and in their daily lives when they're carrying a firearm. So this week, we're gonna be giving you the tip on how to carry and how not to carry your pistol in a vehicle. I specifically like to carry in the appendix position, so that's what I'm going to be using now. And in a vehicle, I do think it's the most practical and accessible method of carry for your pistol. So, um, first let's start off with where you don't wanna carry. You don't want to carry on the handle of your door. So you don't wanna draw, uh, draw your pistol, put it on the door here. You don't wanna draw your pistol and put it in the cup holder here. You don't wanna draw your pistol and tuck it underneath your, uh, tuck it underneath your leg while you're driving. You don't wanna draw your pistol and put it on the dashboard. You don't wanna do any of those things. And all of these things are things and carry methods that I have seen people do. Uh, they don't know it's wrong because they clearly post pictures of it in gun groups on Facebook and uh, it's just not the not correct. You don't want to do that. It's just not safe. So here we go. What I recommend is, I'm going to try to get the best view here for you guys, right? So I carry appendix, so my pistol's right here. Uh, I just came from the gym and I am wearing a concealed carry belt and the pistol is safely holstered in a Kydex holster. When you put your seatbelt on, the way the seatbelt is designed to work is A, this strap here, your lap strap, goes across your lap down here. This strap has one goal. The goal is to keep you in your seat. God forbid you're in an accident and the car flips over, or turns over, or whatever. And then this strap here is supposed to keep you from smashing your face into the steering wheel, right? So it keeps you tight, you know, both at the bottom of the seat and the back of the seat. So this can get a little bit complicated and I've seen people do different things. For example, right now, um, the seatbelt is laying across my pistol. Also, uh, this piece here, this strap is on top of my grip, the pistol grip, and this is just really not ideal for me to access my pistol safely and quickly, right? So what I recommend you do is once you put your seatbelt on, you want to slip or untuck the shirt from underneath the belt and make sure that the belt is laying where it's supposed to, right? So it's not on my gun, it's where it's supposed to be. That way, if my car were to roll over, it will keep me hopefully in my seat. Then this piece, this strap here, you don't want it over your gun. A lot of folks, what they like to do is they put it over their gun this way. Uh, you don't wanna do that. You wanna either have it back here or even tucked underneath the back of the gun, meaning behind the gun or between the gun and your ab area. The reason for that is if this strap is on your gun, and this is more so for larger guns, right now I have a uh, P365 Wilson Combat frame, the short one, the original one, so it's not a huge issue, but with a longer frame or a larger frame, this is go the strap's gonna wanna lay across the grip. You don't want that because now you're defeating the purpose of your strap. You want the strap to be tight against your body. God forbid there's an accident, you are secure or as secure as possible, okay? Another thing I see people do is they grab this strap, the lap strap, and they tuck it behind the gun. By tucking the strap behind the gun, the strap is now further up on my ab area, and God forbid there is an accident, I'm going to get a lot of pressure from that strap into my ab. That is not right because it can internally damage me. So always keep the belt fastened and worn as it's intended to, right? So what I do is I lift the shirt up, bring the belt down to where it's supposed to be, and then I go like that, right? So now the belt, that, that's been solved. That issue is, is a non-issue anymore. 
Now accessibility for your pistol, like I said, you wanna untuck your shirt from the seatbelt, which I already have done, and just drape it over your pistol. If you don't live in a concealed carry state, what you can also do is tuck your shirt behind the pistol and holster so that your gun is more easily and readily available for you to draw, and it eliminates the access part of your draw. So no need to clear your cover garment here because the pistol's already exposed. Now, if you live in a concealed carry state, you don't want to be um, open carrying, you know, especially in a sedan like the one I'm in now. Someone walks by, they see you're open carrying, they take a picture of you, whatever, a cop can see you. You don't want to break any laws. So if you're in a concealed carry state, simply drape your cover garment over the pistol and just remember that now you have to clear your cover garment, which is not a problem because it's not caught by the seatbelt. So you lift up, you could access your pistol. Now let's talk about the draw. The draw is extremely important, especially from this seated position in a vehicle or a chair or wherever you may be seated. The draw changes slightly because we are not standing, so our legs aren't flush with our chest we're seated. So when most people draw their pistol and they don't know how to do this, they point either down at their legs or at their feet or whatever, any other part that is not safe to be pointing at. So we always want to maintain our muzzle discipline, always, right? Always keep that firearm pointed in a safe direction. So right now my vehicle's in park, so I am able to get my right leg all the way up against the center console of my vehicle, right up against the wall, and my left foot and leg are completely to the left, so my legs are wide open. That gives me a space between my legs for when I draw the pistol, thrust my hips forward, my pistol comes out in an already safe direction. I never am pointing at my legs or my feet. Now, let's say there's an emergency and you can't get your vehicle in park. Your foot's either on the brake or on the accelerator, whatever the case may be. What I highly recommend is if your foot is on the brake or on any of your pedals, shift, shift your heel all the way right as best as you can and your whole knee and your leg and just keep whatever, you know, toes or whatever you can reach on your pedals. That way you move more of your body, of your limb and your extremities out of the way to give you that clear, safe location to point your muzzle when you come out to present. So, um, here we go. When you do this, you're going to access, I'm gonna move my hand here so you can see, you're gonna access your pistol, right? By doing that, you first have to clear the cover garment, you're gonna grip. Now you're going to thrust your hips out as far as you can. It's a little hard when you're in a seat belt. So when that gun comes out, comes out on an angle. Now that gun, is pointed in a safe direction right now. It's not pointed at my feet. It's not pointed at my legs. It's not pointed at my family jewels. It's not pointing in my stomach or anything like that. Now this is very important because what if you have to shoot out this window? You've gotta be very mindful not to turn the gun this way because now you're gonna be pointing at your leg, correct? Or vice versa, this way, you'll point at this leg. So if you're gonna present straight, you know, you gotta shoot through the windshield, it's not ideal, but let's say you have to, you just punch straight out, not a problem, you're safe there, always keeping muzzle discipline. If you gotta shoot out to the right, not a problem, bring the gun up, then you turn the gun, right? You don't wanna just turn the gun, draw and turn the gun this way, that is absolutely not safe, right? And your trigger finger should always be off of the trigger until you are ready to shoot. Now, to reholster, keeping that gun in a safe direction, not pointing at any part of our body, you're going to clear the cover garment. You're going to look down into your holster, make sure nothing has been caught in there. No cover garment, no belts, no seat belts, no nothing. You're gonna bring the gun in and safely and securely holster that firearm, and now you're good to go. So now I'm just gonna do it normal speed so you can see what that would look like. Again, I'm in park, so my legs are already wide, uh, wide apart. They're open, safe direction between my legs. So you're gonna clear cover garment, access, keep this hand up on your chest, draw to in a safe direction, and then do what you gotta do, all right? You either punch out or shoot from compression, whatever. So 
then reholster and we're good to go. So be very mindful. It is very important, always important to always keep your firing pointed in a safe direction. Always keep your finger off of the trigger until you're ready to freaking shoot. Do not put that finger on that trigger as you're drawing. Uh, don't do that. A lot of people, especially in an emergency, they, they, they might put that finger on the trigger prior to the correct time and things can happen. You don't want to put yourself out of that fight. So always follow your safety rules, no matter what, whether it's in a basic class, advanced class, in a real life situation, whether you're dry firing, whatever. Now to, to, to practice this, because if you carry a gun and you have never practiced drawing in a vehicle, and that's how you live your life. You have a vehicle, you carry a gun, and you have never practiced this. You need to start practicing, okay? A real life situation is not going to be, oh, nice weather climate controlled range, target's not moving, you're not moving, you're just shooting at 25 feet, 15 feet, whatever. You gotta be dynamic in your training. You must train the way you're going to fight. Now, you might be fighting from your car. You, you might be fighting in different situations, so you've gotta practice. Now, when you practice this, you should always practice with dry firing. That means absolutely zero ammo when you're practicing. Always find a safe direction, park your car somewhere safe, make sure there's no one else around, and practice, practice, practice. You can record yourself, you can see what you're doing wrong after you review the footage. If you wanna train with us, you're more than welcome to do so. We'll teach you, we'll, we'll, we'll take it step by step. Remember, step by step before full speed right also you want to make sure that you understand that repetition 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 will create muscle memory so god forbid you ever need these skills it'll come automatically hopefully right so always practice always train always repeat and repeat and repeat it's like going to the gym you you just do reps that builds your muscle. The same thing is uh, for training. You train, you train, you train, you keep repeating it, you keep training the same stuff and you get better at it, right? So please, please, please practice. If you carry a gun, if you have a permit and you haven't taken a class after your, your basic pistol shooting class, that, that's not, not the safest thing you're doing right now. And we're make, we make these videos to help you. Uh, it, they're free. This is free information. Usually you pay for this in a class. And we do this so that people can be more aware that, hey, I have a gun. I have a tool. I actually don't know how to use a tool. Guarantee you most people out there don't know how to draw from a vehicle, don't know how to reholster from a vehicle, right? So I'm bringing awareness to you guys. I want you to practice. I want you to be safe. I don't mind doing, you know, this stuff, you know, these videos for free, free tips here and there to help you realize that these things are, are real skills that you should have. So if you don't carry a gun, no problem. You don't need to do this. If you own a firearm and, and you don't carry it, that's your decision and that's fine. You don't need the skill. But this is an important skill for those of you who carry a firearm, all right? If you'd like to train with us, let us know. We could do this. Uh, but please remember whenever you're training on your own that you should be using dry fire only. You can use snap caps if you want to practice, you know, your tap and rack drills while you're in your car, that's fine. But do not use live ammunition unless you are at a range that allows you to do this kind of stuff. All right. If you have any questions, give us a call 860-707-7652. Shoot us a message on Facebook, Instagram, or send us an email or go to our website and sign up for one of our upcoming classes. Make sure that you stay safe, that you practice and train, keep training. Thank you very much, hope this helps.